in a landmark verdict, the Supreme Court today has toppled the presidential pardon given to Yograj Thakal, alias Regal, who was earlier serving life sentence on murder charges of a social activist, Chetan Manandhar. The government decision to provide amnesty to Regal was earlier condemned by human rights activists, while Bharati Sherpa, the former spouse of the slain activist Manandhar, had waged a single-handed battle against the injustice surrounding the presidential pardon. Good evening, I'm Sarah Chitrakar and these are the headlines of the hour. The Supreme Court topples the government decision of presidential pardon to Yograj Thakal alias Regal. Thakal arrested from Nepal Ganj immediately after the verdict. Human trafficking nexus thrives in western Nepal. Unsuspecting locals swindled off millions of rupees in the name of landing in the US. Israel continues to pound Jabalia refugee camp, a hospital in Gaza serving cancer patients forced to shut down. US President Biden calls for a pause in attacks. And Oman stun host Nepal at the ICC T20 World Cup Asia qualifiers today. Nepal to take on UAE in the semi-final tomorrow. The Supreme Court has rejected the presidential pardon administered to Yograj Thakal, alias Regal, who was earlier serving life imprisonment. President Ram Chandra Podil had administered the pardon to Regal on the recommendation of the government on the Constitution Day on 20th September earlier this year. The joint bench of justices Ishar Prasad Khatiwara, Sapna Pradhan Malla and Kumar Chudal issued the verdict earlier today, rejecting the presidential pardon administered to Regal on the recommendation of the government on the occasion of the Constitution Day. As per the verdict, Regal has to serve the remaining 11 years and 11 months in jail. The Supreme Court has also cautioned of issuing similar verdicts in the coming days and has said that the consent of the victim's family is a must while taking such decisions. Bharati Manandar, whose husband was gruesomely killed by Regal, had filed a writ at the Supreme Court demanding to scrap the presidential pardon which was granted on the recommendation of the Council of Ministers and implemented by the President. Hearing on the writ had been conducted relentlessly since Tuesday. The Apex Court issued the verdict today after the prosecution and defense from the respective sides had concluded yesterday. The court had ordered life imprisonment, convicting Thakal of killing social activist Chetan Manandhar of Nepal Ganj with a sharp weapon on 13 July 2015. Police have arrested Yograj Thakal alias Regal from Nepal Ganj instantly after the Supreme Court verdict revoked the presidential pardon administered to him. Police had arrested Regal from his in-law's house in Setu Bika, Nepal Ganj. Superintendent of Police of District Police Office Baki said that Regal was hiding at his in-law's house. Prior to being arrested, Regal had posted a video on a social media platform saying that he honored the Supreme Court verdict and would surrender. However, police have said that Regal had rather been hiding and was later arrested. Bharti Sherpa has concluded her hunger strike after the Supreme Court issued the verdict rejecting the presidential pardon administered to Yograj Thakal alias Regal. Bharti had begun staging a hunger strike in capital's Maitikar after the presidential pardon was administered to Regal, who had been serving jail term for killing her husband Chetan Manandhar following the verdict issued by the Baki District Court and Nepal Ganj High Court. Human rights activist Krishna Pahadi said that the Supreme Court verdict was in favor of human rights. Meanwhile, legal experts said that the Supreme Court's verdict, which has revoked the government decision to grant pardon to a criminal convicted of heinous crime, was in fact has set a welcome precedent. The pardon administered to a criminal convicted of heinous crime by the president under the recommendation of the government had drawn widespread criticisms. The ongoing session of the federal parliament is to end at midnight tonight. The meeting of the Council of Ministers today held at the office of the Prime Minister in Singadarbar decided to recommend ending the ongoing session of the parliament to President Ramchandra Paudil. 
Meanwhile, the meeting of the House of Representatives was held earlier today where the parliamentarians aired their opinions. Leader of main political parties have said that questions would be raised on the governing system if the parliament is not made effective. Speaking during the last meeting of the second session of the House of Representatives, leaders admitted of failing to make the parliament effective. Chief Whip of Nepali Congress, Ramesh Lekhak, said that the failure of the constitution would be devastating for the country. He opined that continuous parliament obstruction has also contributed towards making the parliament less effective. CPNUML lawmaker Bishnu Paudel blamed the government of ignoring the issues tabled at the parliament. He warned the government that a lackluster parliament would not be able to generate outcomes. Meanwhile, CPN Maus Center lawmaker Barshaman Pun expressed a dissatisfaction, saying that the trend of speaking indiscriminately at the parliament was on the rise. During the meeting, lawmakers had drawn the government's attention towards making efforts to release Nepali student Bipin Joshi, who has been captured by Hamas militants in Gaza. Congress lawmaker Sanjay Gautam observed silence for one minute, saying that the government had ignored the issues tabled at the parliament. In our Public Voice segment, today we have asked in several provinces regarding their take on the Parliament's failure to formulate important laws. Let's take a look at what they had to say. We have been working on the Parliament for a long time, and we have been working on the Parliament for a long time. विधायक गुरु पास करने से ग्राहक स्थिति छाई नहीं बनाऊं जब बनाऊं जो बनाऊं जो सब पे नियम कानूनी है कुनी चीज बनी रहा है छाई ना तो बनाऊं ना पोर्शन ही संसद में खास कर नेतृत्व करने व्यक्ति है रूम में कार्य समता दक्षता को र अनुभव को पनी कमी हो सब बंदा पहला तो सदन में दक्ष लीडर पुगना न सकनु र और को चाहिए सदन में लीडर होले आप वो अनुकूल मात्रा चाहिए कैनोन बनाऊँ ना खोजनु सरकार ले आप वो अनुकूल अधिवेशन बोलाऊँ ने रान त्याग करने परिपट ले नेता हरू आपनों स्वार्थ पूर्ति कला के आपनों अनुकूल नियम कानून बनाऊं ना मैं बेस्ट वाह करे। इन्हीं यारों आपनों व्यक्तिगत स्वार्थ और पार्टीगत स्वार्थ का कारण लगा दा। नेपुण्य वाला दाल को इस पोस्ट का बहुत मतलब वाह कारण ले पनी वाला। दाल अरे बीस बाग वांडा मिलना ना सके का कारण ले। यार को नियत ने देश में असल कानून बनाया आप वो बांधन जब इन चांस हैं नौतर फायदे वाले ना जो उनके काम ही गौरतलब के बीच में जिला कहाँ सब गांव कहाँ सब समस्त अलग तक आने संबंध ज्ञान ही ना बात होना ले तो आप उलाई ने इस अठारों में पढ़ने ना समस्त जो लोग विधायी का सा समस्त सा उन वाले कानून को महत्व जिसको सही असर और परिणाम उन्हें आप ही खाना मां आप ही नाता घोटा और लाइव का स्नान मां बिकेट और लाइव विदेश प्लान करना हम तेरा मां बेस्ट सन तेरे साल मां लागत नहीं आई लेकिन संसद धारण बाटा यूज़ तो कुरा को आप ऐसा करना सके इस सरकार ने सुनिंद पाने पर आया हुआ है ना अब सरकार अब डिलास सुस्ती अब कई बार ले अब किन ऐसे वही � Time now for our segment, Public Pulse by Texas with the opinion. Public Pulse. Before that, let's take a look at the response from yesterday's poll. Yesterday, we had asked, what do you term the party leading the government announcing struggle programs? 26% voted for A, intention to hide flaws, 36% for B, vote politics, and 38% for C, genuine concerns. Here's today's question. Why has the number of students increased in the law stream? The options are A, trying to promote self-employment, B, concerned towards law, and C, copycats. Voting is on. Type any WS, select your option, A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. The number of Nepali nationals leaving the country for better job opportunities in foreign soil is on the rise. Local residents from Rukum West and Western region have been opting for the U.S. even as it means risking their lives. Chairperson of Sisni Rural Municipality in Rukum West opined that the number of local people from the municipality might be much more than the available data. 
It means that a large number of unsuspecting youths have been opting for dangerous illegal routes to land in the U.S. soil, risking their lives. At the same time, Cisne Rural Municipality is just a representative case. The nexus of human traffickers have spread far and wide. One individual carrying foreign dream are taking loans at the hefty interest rate between 30 to 40 percent. The middlemen are charging these youths between 5 to 8 million rupees per individual. On an alarming note, the authority is completely unaware about the state of affairs as the government lacks the data on the exodus of local youths. The life-threatening journey spanning months takes off from the capital's Tribune International Airport as the journey traverses along Dubai, Moscow, Bogota, Bolivia, Colombia, Panama, Costa Rica, Guatemala, Honduras, Mexico and finally USA. It is not that everyone makes it to the US. Some are stranded in the middle of the journey, some get killed in the course of the journey, while some others, despite paying a hefty amount to the middlemen, fail to start their journey itself. The exodus of youths means that only children and elderly citizens' presence is witnessed in the villages. Time now for international update. Israel has pounded Gaza for the 27th day for of a military operation to wipe out Hamas following the October 7 attack by the Islamist group. Plums of smoke could be seen rising from blast earlier today as Israeli airstrikes continued on the enclave. Israel has been conducting an intense campaign of aerial bombardment in Gaza since the October 7 attack. Israel said 1,400 people, mostly civilians, were killed and more than 200 taken hostage, some of them foreign nationals or with dual Israeli nationality. The Gaza Health Ministry in the Hamas-run enclave said at least 8,796 Palestinians in the narrow coastal enclave, including 3,648 children, have been killed by Israeli strikes since October 7. Meanwhile, U.S. President Joe Biden said on Wednesday that Americans will now be able to exit war-torn Gaza and the administration will work hard to get additional Americans out of the region in the days ahead. An initial group of foreign nationals, including Americans, departed Gaza on Wednesday, the U.S. State Department reported earlier in the day, adding that Washington expects exits of U.S. citizens and others to continue over the next several days. Sports News. Oman stunned Team Nepal by five runs in the last group match of the ongoing ICC T20 World Cup Asia Zone qualifiers. With the win, Oman advanced to the semi-final as Group A winners, while Nepal finished as runner-up following the defeat. In the match played at TU Ground Kirtipur, Nepal elected to field first after winning the toss. Oman got off to a disastrous start as they lost wickets at regular interval to be reduced to 4 for 38 in the sixth over. Zishan Maksud top scored for Oman with 32 runs, while Ayan Khan chipped in with 18 runs. There was some useful contribution with the bat as at the end as Nasim Kushi struck 25, while Shakil Ahmed scored 22 runs to take Oman to 145 runs for the loss of nine wickets. Karan Kesi was the most successful bowler for Nepal with three wickets, while Sompal Kami and Sandeep Lamichani shared two wickets each. Chasing 146 runs for victory, Kushal Bhutel started in his typical style, hitting three sixes and one fours in his 26 runs. However, Nepal kept losing wickets to pile pressure during the chase. The host needed 26 runs off the last over to pull an unlikely victory. Nepal's young batter Bibek Yadav struck three successive sixes to bring Nepal close to victory. However, he departed in the fourth ball of the last over for 39 runs. Nepal still had a chance with Karan Kesi at the crease, but Kesi too was out of the last ball of the innings as Nepal lost the match by five runs.
Nepal take on UAE in the semi-final of the ICC T20 World Cup Asia June qualifiers. The match at Mulpani Ground is slated for 11 a.m. kickoff. A win tomorrow will give Nepal ticket to the T20 World Cup to be jointly hosted by America and the West Indies. Even as the equation in recent matches favors Nepal, the hosts were beaten by UAE in the finals of the recently held three-nation T20 series. Nepal have now lost two matches on home turf in quick succession. Team Nepal are now wary of their batting failures as head coach Monty Desai said that Nepal will try to learn from the mistakes made. That's all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Good night.